Hello, and welcome to the Five Core Life Podcast with Will Moore, founder of More Momentum. If you have not already, go ahead and pound that subscribe button so you get notified when new episodes air every week. In today's episode of the Five Core Life, host Will Moore sits down with NQ, an award winning poet and multi platinum songwriter. NQ drops serious knowledge on the meaning of life and how to get the meaning of life working for you instead of against you. NQ analyzes technology's teenage years, where we are today, and where technology is headed in the future. And lastly, you'll learn how happiness is not a point, but a range. A little bit more about NQ. NQ is an award-winning poet, best-selling author, and multi-platinum songwriter. His groundbreaking achievements include being named to Oprah's Super Soul 100 list of world's most influential thought leaders, being the first spoken word artist to perform with Cirque du Soleil, and being featured on A&E, ESPN, and HBO's Deaf Poetry Jam. He's inspired audiences around the world through his live performances and storytelling workshops. Many of his recent poetry videos have gone viral with over 100 million views combined, and he recently released his new book, Inquire Within. Are you ready to fire on all cylinders? If so, let's go. Everyone has the same five core areas of their life that ultimately determine how happy they'll be. Unfortunately, most of us have developed failure habits in each, and it's Will Moore's mission to help replace those with success habits to maximize momentum. After exiting his business for a combined nine-figure sum, Will learned it's not just about becoming an entrepreneur of your career, but an entrepreneur of the most important business you'll ever run, your life. And to crush it in your life requires firing on all cylinders in your five cores by continually taking action, building habits, and maintaining balance in each. I like to kind of let let the let the guests take over at this point and just kind of tell me your journey kind of from where you started to kind of how you got to here and then we'll talk a little bit about where you're headed. I was raised in uh Santa Monica, California and uh I fell in love with uh hip hop music when I was like I don't know, 10 years old and I started rhyming and freestyling and battling and um making songs and all that stuff. And then when I was 19 years old, I wound up in an open mic for poets in Los Angeles called the Poetry Lounge. And it was one of the biggest, if not the biggest, open mic in the country. It was definitely the biggest open mic in Los Angeles. It was like 350 people pretty much every single week that would show up at this place. And so I, I like to describe it as church without religion. It was a sacred space. And it was the first time that I saw people be uh, vulnerable from a place of strength and uh, passionate for the things that they believed in, um, making political and social statements. Uh, and the, the community, community was, so, was special. so special. I think I'm, I'm losing you again. I'm getting echoes inside. Yeah, I think we're losing you again. Okay, I got you. We're back. Hey, we'll cut that. We'll cut that out in the interview. I'm so sorry. My earbuds. I go to put them on, and then everything just goes dead. I don't know, but it's my fault. It, it really is all good. I'm not even. I'm not even tripping in the slightest. It, you know, it's pretty cool that we can talk to each other like this. Now there's a there's a bright side, right? Technology, while frustrating and annoying, when you look at this ten thousand foot view, we're pretty damn lucky, right? Well, you know, we are, there's this story. I don't know who. I don't know who, where I heard this story from, but it was this story about um, when they first got Wi-Fi on planes. Have you heard this story? No. They, they come out and they're like, we have Wi-Fi on this plane. And everybody just starts cheering because it was the first time that that had ever happened. And they're so excited. They're like, we have Wi-Fi on planes, you know? Wow, this is unbelievable. And then the plane takes off and of course, the Wi-Fi, like 15 or 20 minutes into the flight, stops working. And they're like, sorry, the Wi-Fi isn't going to work on this flight. And then suddenly everybody's like, oh, 
God, the Wi-Fi is not working. Like, and, and so they were angry about something that they didn't even know was possible 30 minutes earlier, you know? And, and I'm just saying that to say, like, we're like, oh, God, the thing isn't working across the country. It's not exactly the way that I want. And, and it's like, dude, we're literally, I've never even met you in my entire life. We're in completely different places. There's other people that are giving us a part of their life, like a part of their time that are like on this thing and they're emojiing with, I mean, fucking technology is amazing, man. I, you know, it's, all, it's all good if I can't hear you for 20 seconds. Can I just tell you something? I love that you just told that story. I haven't heard that one, but I, I, I use my own version of that story to like kind of shine a big old spotlight on how ridiculous humans can be sometimes and how mm -hmm. it's like, and, and we're in this, you know, and it ties into, we're in this insta generation, right? Where it's like, we ex now, as you get more, the more you get, the more you expect. And it's mm -hmm. not necessarily a good thing if you don't have your head screwed on straight, right? It's like, mm -hmm. okay, well I can click a button and literally get anything I want, like within an hour, including delivering right. myself across town including my my lunch, including, you know, anything I want from Amazon that I can even think of. And if anything goes wrong, you know, it's like, whoa, what the hell? You know, and so I used to, have you ever seen that movie Transformers? It doesn't really seem like a movie that's up here. Okay, okay, okay. Why do I judge? Why do I think you might not have seen Transformers? Hey, I'm a dude's dude, you know, I like Transformers. Transformers, man, the first movie, I'll never forget, came out and I literally, my mind, my brain almost exploded. I mean, do you remember the special effects in that movie were so far and above? It's kind of like when Matrix yeah, it was came like, out. Wah, 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 wah. Right, you're like, you're like, what the hell just happened? Like, was that like, did that have we come that far in technology? And I'll never forget as I'm walking out, the guy in front of me. There's always a Debbie Downer. He's like, man, he's like that movie. Just I don't know. It was all right. He's like, you know, it was kind of. And I don't even remember what he said, but I just remember thinking. Dude, like, mm. really? Like, th that movie just, like, I, I don't know. To me, anybody that could not just have their mind blown. It was something about the special effects. Like, I thought the special effects were a little wonky, and I just remember it. It, it kind of ties into what you were just saying in terms of, like, we are just greedy people. It's like, if before that movie, he would have never imagined special effects were that good. And then what he did is probably, like, three-quarters through the movie, he's like, at first, his brain started to explode like mine, and then three quarters in, he was probably like, you know what, that that scene doesn't quite gel. I think they kind of miss a, a little special effect. And then he had something to criticize it on, and it's just kind of amazing how that works. Well, so it's I love easy your... to criticize when you're outside of the game as well. That's right, man. It's more fun that way, you know, like, because you get to feel like you're superior to whoever's playing in whatever genre, by the way. It could be art but it could be any part of life, you know? It's just so easy for people to critique things. It's, it's easier to hate than it is to create. That's a thousand percent right. And, you know, it, it's one of those things, it's like, the, I always talk about like low hanging fruit, you know, we're a low hanging fruit. Like our, our lizard brains, it's how we're programmed. Like if it's low hanging, we want to grab it and criticizing fits right into that. Just like I was talking about, we're in this instant generation. Like if you can click a button and get what you want versus having to work for it, like duh. Yeah. Right. But in doing that, what's that what's that doing to your happiness? How's that affecting your overall state of being, your mindset? So speaking of mindset. Well let me just say something. Sometimes yeah, yeah. your happiness is probably comes from working hard and then achieving something. So if everything is so easy, you know, it takes away the satisfaction of putting in the time and energy and love that it takes to do something difficult and then achieving it and saying, ah, I did that. You know, I mean, if it, if it was just that low hanging fruit, I, I kind of like fruit higher on the tree. I kind of like it, you know, that's but, why but you're I'm successful. saying that from a standpoint of my survival needs are met. So if, if my survival needs are not met, no, I want low hanging fruit, but like, I like to reach. If I'm starving. Yeah. Give me that pair. Right. Like you just nailed it, right? And I talk about this all the time. And so, yeah, before I, I had a, a question about mindset I wanted to get into with you. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll pause that for a second because I, I want to explore this for a second. Uh, it, it's so true in that it's like we, we think we want 
the million dollars. Have you ever seen that show? The lottery ruined my life or heard about it. We think we want No, but I, I, I don't need to because the name is so perfect. The, the name says the it show. all. The name says it all. And we think we want that. Just hand me $10 million so I can go sit on a beach and drink a pina colada. But that doesn't make us happy. And anybody that doesn't have the 10 million is going to hear this and be like, this guy's, you know, bullshit. But for anybody that's, you know, gotten to a place, I, I can confirm because I sold my business. We did, we did pretty well. I technically don't have to work for the rest of my life. Cool. Did it make me happy? You're darn right. It did for a second because I worked 10 years to get there and I blood, sweat and tears to build this business that we were then able to exit on. And it was like, oh, like a big weight, a relief. But it didn't take very long for my brain to, to go, okay, now what? What's the mm. next mountain to climb? What's the next challenge? And to me, it ties in all the stuff we're talking about, which is if you're not moving, you're dying. If you're not growing, if you're not working, if you don't have goals and hitting a button defeats all that. Mm. It completely cancels it all out. Cause it's like, and then all of a sudden your brain, it totally screws with our, I mean, there's a reason that the world happiness report over the last, since I think 2012, we're going down every single year. Yet our technology is exponentially increasing. It's like Stan Lee's whole statement, Marvel Comics, Mr. Stan Lee, the great late Stan Lee, with great power, there must also come great responsibility. We haven't figured out how to use it all responsibly yet. And left to our own devices, we're gonna do that. We're gonna grab that low hanging fruit. We're gonna spend too much time on social media. We're gonna you know, get sucked into all this stuff instead of going out and stepping back and going, okay, what really makes me happy? Is it hitting a like button on a friend I haven't seen in 10 years? Or is it calling up somebody, scheduling a lunch, having a real live human conversation face to face? These types of things, you know, it's, that's what I'm trying to, to bring back. So, and, mm -hmm. and bring back into the mix. I want to make- So why, why do you think people, yeah, why do you think people aren't as happy? I mean, what you're saying right now, um, um, hearing you say it's because of a lack of connection and lack of community and um, the ease with which people can access things. Uh, so they don't have to uh, actually go after something with with passion. Um, is is that what it is? I mean, when I when I think about it, like I feel like I don't know. Like the purpose is a big thing, right? Like if somebody was like, "Oh, what's my purpose in life?" That's like a huge thing. But if they could simplify it down to just what am I excited about, or you know what is moving to me or what is inspiring to me, or even if that's too big, it's just like, what am I curious about? You know, and they could do that in their career. They could do that in their uh, relationships, friendships, romantic, any of it. Um, there's a, a good saying, it's a follow the path and the path will lead the way. Um, anyway, that that's for me, if I was to, summarize it i think that's how i organize my life is just trying to pay attention like building my muscle of paying attention to the things that i'm curious about and then that leads me to something that is purposeful in my life um which gives me a lot of meaning um and and that meaning i think gives me a lot of happiness uh so I'm curious, what, uh, why do you think that, I mean, is, is there anything else that we're not saying right now? Why do you think that, that the World Happiness Index has gone down? That's really, uh, it's pretty sad, actually. I do think I, I do have, I, I do think I have, there's a piece of a, the puzzle that I, I haven't mentioned. So years ago, when iPhones came out, and I was just starting my, my old business that I sold, I came across this app when it was like, there weren't many apps out there and I was like searching through. And this thing was called the equation of life. Okay. Or excuse me, the meaning of life. And of course I clicked on it, right? Like meaning of life, bring it on. What is that? It was one picture. There was no intro. There was no, it was literally just one diagram. And I'm going to share mm -hmm. that with you right now. Cause I have it right here on my vision board. Cool. At the very top, it says we strive for more. And then there's a little um, arrow, semicircle arrow pointing down that says because. And then at the bottom, it says we feel dissatisfied. And then there's another semicircle arrow pointing back up to 
we strive for more. So here we go. Now it's a circle. We strive for more because we feel dissatisfied. We feel dissatisfied because we strive for more. And at first when I read that, I actually didn't quite understand it. And then I started to think about it and I got a little bit depressed. I'm like, so, so here's, here's what I got out of it. I'm like, you're telling me that no matter what I do in life, I'm always going to be dissatisfied because I'm striving for more. I'm like, that sounds depressing. So there's no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Like I'm going to, no matter what I get, I'm still going to be dissatisfied. But then, and it didn't, didn't happen right away. It took me a while to figure this out. I realized how to use it to my advantage and it ties into everything we're talking about here, which is cool. how to be happy and what ha true happiness is. And to me, it's the continual movement. It's, it's not that $10 million and sitting on the beach, pina colada, and then just killing yourself in the meantime to do that and ignoring all the other important areas of your life, like your relationships, your physical health, your emotional health, your mindset, your giving back, your, your, uh, you know, your career and your finance. It's not ignoring all that. It's, it's every single day living in the moment and enjoying that gray space in between that we feel dissatisfied. We strive for more because we feel dissatisfied. It's in that because area. And if you basically can understand that unless you're moving and growing, you're not going to be fully happy ever. And mm -hmm. again, going back to that complacency that we kind of are developing into. And it makes sense when we, we don't have to do less, the more we can hit a button and get anything we want delivered to us. And the more we see on social media, the 16 year old kid who's making 25 million a year because he's, you know, doing some weird dances or wears weird clothes, the more that's going to, that's going to keep hurting. So until we can figure out how to resolve all this, and I don't know if you saw this documentary called the social dilemma on Netflix. Oh, I did see it. Yeah. It ties into that stuff where it's like yeah. you know, certain, certain companies have learned how to use this to their advantage in terms of our hitting our dopamine and, and getting us to click more and, and get more into it. But that's doing nothing for our happiness. They don't, they have a financial fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders, Facebook, Google. They're not necessarily evil people. I don't think Mark Zuckerberg, Larry Page are like these bad people. I think yeah. that they're stuck. The genie's out of the bag. They now have to keep growing their shares. And if that means making you less happy and hurting your wellness in order to get you to click more and, and, and do this and do that in order you know, to, to be able to sell your attention, which is what they're doing, they're going to do it, right? And so all of but this- But I think, like, let yeah. me push back for a minute. Not that you're wrong. I think you're right. But, but I also think that the, like, I'm, I'm not, I just want to make this clear. Not that anybody cares, but I want to say what I want to say. So I want to make this clear. I'm not like an eternal optimist. I'm not like this overly positive person all the time. I don't like deny my negative feelings. I'm not like everything's going to be amazing. Uh, but I try to land on the side of hope and infinite possibility. And I try to do that for myself and I try to do that for my audience. When I look at social media, it just seems like it's in a very adolescent stage. It's really young, man. Like, and so there's all these negative things that come from social media right now in our humanity, in our culture. But there's also a lot of positive things. It's like a fucking teenager or something, you know? It's acting like an asshole. And eventually, <laughs> like I think we will grow out of that. I really do. Like, you know, even if it winds up being through decentralized uh, systems, right now, uh, you could say that this tool that we're using is amazing. And we could go into all of that if we wanted to. But no matter what it is, you and I are, and everyone that's watching, this is really what's happening right now, they are monetizing our attention and our information. And a very few number of people are getting rich off of our attention and our information. In the future, I kind of feel like we'll monetize our own attention and our own information. And we'll get to decide how much we want to divvy up and where we want to put it. Um, and if you think about AI and how a lot of the jobs are going to go away anyway, this is going to wind up being our job, where we put our attention where we put our time, which really, if you think about it, is our most valuable thing. It's our time. 
like the older that I get, like money is just a, it's a monetary energy that represents our time. That's literally all it is. So uh, I just think that things will change as this tool matures uh, and humanity hopefully matures along with it. Not to say shit isn't fucked up. Shit is fucked up. Right. <laughs> Well, I mean, I love that because it's, it's like we started the conversation with this whole, and this is kind of, I love how this conversation is morphed into, by the way. Not at all what I plan on talking to you about, but that, those are always the best, uh, the best, the best interviews. Um, just, just free, free, free flowing. Like you're It's more fun good. that way, man, because it's like when I read my bio or I tell people what I do or what I blah, 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 right. maybe I could sell more books in you know a moment, but how many books am I going to sell right now? Like two or whatever. I want to actually just talk and, and talk, explore yeah. life and, you know, uh, maybe someone will get something right. out of me being surprised and you being surprised rather than us just saying like our formulated answers, you know, that's exactly right. And here we are, like you we're both spark. I mean, you can already tell like anybody watching this, I'm sure is picking up on it. Like we're sparking each other's um, meaning of life right now. Cause we're both yeah. going, wow. Yeah. That's something I hadn't thought about. I want to explore that more. I want to build on that. I'm growing. Like my, literally my brain is growing just like my brain exploded watching transformers. <laughs> can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you think, is there a way to, when you go back to that wheel, which I love what you're saying is that you used it for you. The first thing that came into my mind is my wife uh, told me the other day when she was in therapy years ago, not that therapy isn't good to be in now, but she was in therapy years Therapy's ago great. for a specific relationship, right? Yeah. And she said that the, the, uh, the person showed her the wheel of abuse and she looked at it and she went like that and she realized, oh my God, like this is what I had created for myself. And she of course worked herself out of that and blah, 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 and now we're together. But uh, when I heard you, I was like, wow, that sounds like the self wheel of abuse. Like that was the first thing that came to my head. So I'm curious, do you think, my love, I love you so much, she's on here, she jumped on. Um, so do you think that, uh, um, what's the question I was gonna ask you? Oh yeah, do you think there's another way to have fuel to move forward in your life and accomplish goals without the dissatisfaction? And it's just a question. I, I don't even know the answer, but what do you think? Absolutely. And and what I was kind of trying to get at, I think I got, I started getting a little bit, I'm ADD and I started going off on another tangent with the social dilemma. But yes, this is where, this is what I want to sum up about this whole thing is that um, it's that, it, it's knowing that what actually makes you happy is the growing. And to me, I, I've kind of broken it into these five core areas of life, your mindset, your career and your finances, your relationships, your physical health and your emotional health and giving back to me. Trust me when I tell you, cause I've spent 25 years coming up with them. There's nothing I'm missing. Everything in your life, everything that makes you sad, everything that makes you happy falls into these categories. And to me, it's about growing in every single one continuously saying, okay, I'm here shining a big old spotlight on your life. And this is where I want to end up. I have this, I call it the back to the future exercise because I'm a kid of the eighties, my favorite movie. And it's like, okay, let's go to the end of your life. What do you want people said about you at your funeral? Not only in general, but like in each of these core areas. Right. And I have my list right here. Right. So I have like five things on each one that I want people to say and knowing with the end in mind, knowing that that's where, you know, when I die, it's going to be over because I can't do anything more and taking this equate this equation I was talking about that it's you got to constantly be learning and growing. It's like, where am I now? And where do I want to get to? And knowing that it's not depressing to know that if I reach one of my goals, then I'm just going to set another one. And mm -hmm. then if I reach that goal, I'm just going to set another one. And rather than being like, oh, so I'm never going to be satisfied. Like I strive mm. for more and then I feel dissatisfied and I have, and I strive for more. No, it's, it's, that's what keeps us moving. But the minute that you forget that and you get complacent, like you look at people like, this is, this is probably an outdated reference, but Elvis Presley, right? He got huge. And you look at his human spirit, you look at the passion and just the pure unadulterated fire that man had inside him in his early years when he just blew up and he was like, holy, what, the, what is this guy? Just like Transformers, right? Like what this guy's dancing, like nobody danced the way he did. Nobody sang the way he did. And he just went for it and didn't care what anybody thought, right? And then 
he didn't have what what we're talking about right now, or at least no, he, I don't think he did because he probably or he chose the wrong one. But he got to a point where he got into the you know maybe he he started not he needed that feeling all the time, and as he started to get a little older, he tried to replace it with drugs. He tried to replace it with eating. So he died overweight, drug addict. You look at his old his songs in the end, and I mean, there was just like a turtle singing. And you're just like, oh man, like, dude, he just, he forgot that he had to keep growing. He got complacent. He got rich, he got famous. And he was like, okay, I got this now. And he just tried to dial it in. And there was no like, okay, how can I get better? How can I keep mm -hmm. growing, right? And he just slowly died. And he died yeah. at an early age. To me, that's the perfect example of what we're talking about here. Hmm. Cool. I love that. So, so maybe the dissatisfaction is actually like the excitement. It's the spur. Time. It's the, you got to use it to knowing, okay, I'm never going to be happy. Just like you, your, your example with the internet on the plane, like, okay, like a goal, like, let's get, let's get the internet on the plane. That's a big goal. And everybody got excited. And it's like you, then you hit it. And then it was like, okay, this is great. And then it like went out and you're like, oh, you know, screw this. Like, and then, but then even when it came back on, it was like, okay, what's next? Like, yeah. Oh, so yeah, I can get on my email. Of course I can. I've been doing this for two days now. Like, okay, great. It's not like, okay, it's over. Like all the airlines can just, you know, now it's, you know, it, it, they're constantly having to evolve and how do we entertain our guests on the planes? And if I'm an airline, you know, that, and that's my business, I'm thinking, how are we evolving? What's next? And I just got on a plane the other day, first one since COVID started. And I thought it was very clever. They got rid of all the TV screens and they just said, here, connect to, connect to your phone or device because everybody already has them. Right. And you, you, you know, they're, they're monetary, they're charging you, which is smart. It's not free and you pay for the internet. And then you can, they have like a list of all these movies you can get on the internet. You can do, and I'm like, okay, smart. That that's where I would have gone with it too. Like they've evolved and this is what it is now. I mean, obviously it's not my thing, but that's, so the point is like, there's always something to grow towards. And the minute you go, okay, because like, as humans, we're going to be dissatisfied if we just stop and go, okay, that's it. You got to keep growing. And so, that's what's cool is it pushes us to keep going beyond and breaking these boundaries and doing these crazy things, which we are doing as a society. And again, this is where it gets tricky because if there's no monitoring of it, and I loved your analogy of like, we're teenagers. I love that because it's like, yeah, we're, we're young in it. And there's nobody that's up here that's going, whoa, 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 guys, you need to make sure that there's at least a little bit of wellness in here and that you're not just sucking the soul out of your users and monetizing their attention and, like we were just saying and, and making sure that there's some element of like it's not completely making them unhappy but they're, it's helping them right but there's nothing like that right now but and that's again, because there's no competition like okay um like because everything is centralized like uh, like i don't think that uh corporations should have the rights of people i don't think that that should be the case <laughs> but i think that as long as they do in our laws, which they do, they should at least be good fucking people. And there's no, there's nothing that holds them to account in the market or in competition, really in the marketplace. So, and what I mean by that is there's no way to determine uh, in the stock market, like how the company treats its employees and how the company treats its customers or community, however they want to use the terminology in this woke age. It, 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 still, it's like there's no way to determine that. If I have to do my own research to find out if this company, blah, blah, blah. But if there was a, a way that you could see that in the market and it actually changed the bottom line for the different companies, then they would have a reason to actually shift. Or if there were decentralized versions of what they were doing, right, then that's actual real competition because then people get to decide, well, I'll just go do peer to peer if you're not being a good corporate person, like, you know, conglomerate of people as a corporation being a good person, then I'll just go elsewhere. Um, so I think that's just gonna happen. And I, I think that, um, you know, as difficult as COVID has been and continues to be for 
a lot of people across the world. I think for humanity, ultimately, it's a wake up call. And I think there's going to be a lot of really interesting technology and change. If you just look historically, that's what always happens after something like this. You know, there's a crazy period. And then because everyone is thrown out of their comfort zone, there's an explosion of innovation afterwards. Um, I could say that just even personally, there's a lot of things that I have done during this period of time that I would not have done had I been on the hamster wheel. And I'm hearing that over and over from so many people. Uh, and I think that there's a collective aspect to that as well. I mean, absolutely. You know, and, and, and things are happening. You know, I always, when you just putting COVID in perspective, you know, it's like, right. It's like, this, this is to me, this is the best thing that could have happened. I mean, of course, I'm not, I'm not an idiot. It's not cool that people die. But in terms of like, a freaking spark of like, hey, this system's broken, it's outdated. Uh, I mean, you and I, uh, or I'm guessing you don't go into an office every day and commute two hours, right? <laughs> Nor do I. But do you know how many people I know that do that? I'm in Chicago now. And that's, yeah. that is standard. Like, Two hours of their life gone every single day. Get to the office. How productive are you? You know, maybe half the time you're working. The other half the time you're at the freaking water cooler. You're chatting with your, you know. You, meanwhile, this force forcing everybody to be at home. They were, people are getting their stuff done in half the time, just as productive, if not more. And then going out and living their five core life, having right. you know, being able to have relationships, go play golf in the middle of the afternoon if that's your passion, whatever it is. And so like. It's going to be interesting, like on that side, how what you're just saying, it's like changes needed to be made and it, it took a really long time. And this was the spark in my, my mind that's going to change a lot of that structure of people just going into an office nine to five. It doesn't, and it doesn't make sense for the employer either. It's paying all that overhead, all that office space. Yeah, it doesn't for sure. Insurance, utilities, all that stuff. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, tying into tech. Sorry, I just lost your second. Tying that into technology. Okay. It's like, that's the, exactly right. I mean, it's it's like, okay, well, we're at the infant stages and competition is the word I want to focus on, what you said. Competition is exactly where my mind is and I want to compete with these dudes. And so uh, I, my, I'm, I picture this company, it's like the Hasbro of happiness. It's like a gamified, like, Let's make it fun. Let's use that same science and tech that we know we, we, is being used to monetize our attention, to get, hit our dopamine so that we want to keep using it. But when you level up on screen, you're going to actually also level up on life. So my first product I'm super excited about. Cool. I promise you this isn't a pitch just because it ties into this. And, no, and, dude, Like I'm, you said, I'm, there's 45 people. The app's not even I'm ready yet. I'm out of here. Kind of it's an app, dude, and you've got these five, you're a rocket, and you've got these five core areas of life. You're going to be going to different planets, different galaxies, fighting your way through aliens, Martians, asteroid fields. And it's basically, it's a way of holding yourself accountable to make sure, like I said earlier, it's up to me, the growth thing. It's all about understanding what your, your habits are in each of these five core areas of your life and replacing them, the failure habits with success habits, right? That's cool. And making sure you're going to continue to improve every single freaking day. And that's happiness. I'm telling you right now, that's it. If anybody tells you different, it's, it's happiness is just continually growing every single day, having goals, knowing what you want to work towards versus just running around like a chicken with your head cut off, being pulled this way and that way by whatever shiny thing sparkles itself in front of you, right? Yeah, I like that. You know, not to uh, overly harp on... Uh capitalism references but it's like having a diversified portfolio you know like basically you know there's that whole thing in in business that you want to have a diversified portfolio you want to make sure that you're not overly uh focused on one thing because if that thing then crashes then your whole you know portfolio crashes but if you spread it out then actually uh if one thing goes down the other thing goes up and 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 then it all winds up going up over time if you've chosen the right things and diversified enough. So uh, you can look at yourself that way with those five areas that you're talking about. And definitely through the, uh, you know, um, the app that you're talking about, like it's an app, right? Is that yep. what it is? Yeah, yep. through the app that you're talking about, then you can practice that. You can see those five things as compartmentalized. Because oftentimes we just like, 
see ourselves as one thing and then it's hard to work on anything because how are you going to work on anything? You get anything overwhelmed. Like, oh, right. I need to do this. I need to do that. Ah, you know, it's too much. Forget about yeah. it. Right. As, as humans, we need to start small and easy and, and those things need to compound over time. Like we are our habits. Our habits are us. And it's, I don't know. Have you read Atomic Habits by James Clear by any chance? You know, I have it and I, I haven't picked it up yet. It was given to me as a gift, but I read it's it. great. Read it. It's, 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 it's a really good read. And I mean, he just talks about um, same type of stuff we're talking about. It's, it's just tiny little actions every day. Your brain doesn't care if habits, your habits are good or bad, helping or hurting you, right? Yeah. Like they're on autopilot. They're doing their thing and they're going to form who you are. You eat cheeseburgers and fries every single day, three meals a day. When you're young, sure, you can get away with it. Flash forward 15 years, Guess what you're going to look like, right? And, yeah. that, and it, that's in every area of your life, relationships, physical health, emotional health, career and finances, mindset. And so it's about like figuring out these little things, starting really small and just getting one at a time. Because if you try to do too many, the brain automatically goes, nah, that's, that's too much. That, that ain't happening. Uh, you know, and, the other day, th this is, is not the other day. That's not accurate. Uh, probably like two years ago. The only reason why I said the other day is because Oh, what is the book again? It's called Atomic Habits. It's because I finished this poem the other day, but the actual start of the poem was like a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. Um, and I had been depressed like a lot of my life. Like I'd had a lot of darkness and different things like that. And, um, and I worked through a lot of it and I'm not gonna get into it, but, um, but really I think underneath everything, I had this like foundation of uh, sadness like sadness was with me and I would hide it behind my anger, you know, or even my happiness, but underneath it was really sadness. Um, so which books would you recommend us to read? You can read my book, Inquire Within. That's a great book. You should read that. Yeah. Um, so, so then, yeah. So, so I'm like, I'm like sitting home alone and my wife was out and, and I, realized that I didn't have that sadness anymore in my life. Like my sadness was gone. And I kind of was like, huh, like, like I kind of miss it. You know, I was like, I, 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 my, I, you know, I miss my sadness. Like I'm kind of sad without it. And it was just such a funny thought to me. So I wrote it down and I ended up writing this whole poem about it. But I think that goes back to the, almost self wheel of abuse, you know, analogy that we were talking about earlier is this like, um, sometimes we get so used to uh, these things in our lives that even if they're not great for us, we just go back to it because it's what we know. You know, it's like, who, who would we be without all of our fears? You know, who would we be without all of our depression? Who would we be without all of our sadness? Not to say that you can get rid of it. You can't like get rid of something, but you can integrate it into you where you own it and it doesn't own you. And, um, and then you can move through life from, from an empowered place. So I just thought it was an interesting thought that like I actually was sad without my sadness because it had become such a, a part of who I was, but I had outgrown it. That's deep. That's really interesting. I've, I've never heard anybody say anything like that. I'm just trying to think about that. And with knowing that you're not bullshitting me right now, um, and obviously this isn't something you, you're making up, I, I'm wondering in the back of my brain if that was a moment that you had where it was like you just sat back and you're like, I'm really happy right now. And I've been happy. I feel like I've been happy for a while. And, and and then you started, you know, reminiscing about the sadness stuff. But to me, I don't know if it's possible as humans to just like hit a level where you're happy and then you're just always happy. And so no. when I talk about building momentum and like becoming happy and always growing, like there's always going to be slaps in the face. There's always going to be moments of sadness, right? It's not like those are going to go away. Um, no, ha happiness is not a point. It's a range. But that's, right. that's, very, that's an important point, which is actually a good line. Happiness is not a point, it's a range. Well, hold on, let me write that point. down, because I'm doing it's show notes. Because it's strange, right? you know, the way, yeah. So, but, but that's what it is, is, is people think that you arrive at happiness, 
but happiness is within this space. It's not one, it's, it's in here and you're gonna go back and forth. What I'm saying about the sadness is the sadness had been an underlying part of who I was my whole life. And I had different masks to put on where I wouldn't let people see that, you know? But in doing that, I couldn't get it out because I wouldn't even allow almost myself sometimes to acknowledge it. There's a difference between uh, that and then just like getting sad in a moment, you know, getting I understand down. what you're saying. So, I, you know, and that's why I think you can't, you can't get rid of shit. That's why th th there's this idea of like uh, positive thoughts at the expense of what, who you truly are. No, that, that doesn't work. You know, like you can't just say, everything's great. Everything's great. Everything's great. That's just a recipe for disaster. Cause then you'll just basically like internalize it, trap it inside of you and, it, you know, take it out on somebody in traffic on a random Wednesday or something like that. Um, I'm talking about acknowledging those things, but then alchemizing them like owning them as a part of who you are and then using that energy, you know, emotion, energy and motion as fuel to go do something in the world that's positive, you know, uh, taking away those negative habits that continue to cycle you back into the same thing. So I did that for a long time and then just kind of realized that underlying sadness that had been there my whole life wasn't there. Uh, and that, that was the realization in that moment. That's, yeah, thank you for clarifying that. So, right, it's, it was more... There was that underlying that you missed, but I still think that that miss, you might have confused that missing. Your brain was like, "Well, first of all, you're an artist, and artists love pain and sadness, right? Uh, I shouldn't say they love it, but they use it. They figured out how to use it. So you figured out how to use your pain and sadness for your craft, for your art, which is now turned into your career, which." Raise the roof. I, I, I'm always telling people if you can combine you, your passion what you're good at with your career, like your gold sauce. And so you were able to do that. And so, right, as you start to then kind of evolve past like that underlying sadness that maybe you were pulling on for, for the, for your poems and for, you know, these things that you were doing, you know, it's kind of like, well, shoot, like a lot of that's gone, but I still think overall you're definitely better off. And if you, if you had to choose, one or the other, you, you'd probably choose the fact that you're continuing to grow, learn, and like you said, it's not a destination to happiness, but become happier and happier, ideally, every single day. Yeah, I mean, that? that's what I explore in the poem, but some people don't make that choice. Some people are unaware, and they miss get the high of sadness. I'm telling you, man, every single emotion is a charge. That's why we're saying when people go on self social media and they are in comparison mode and they're i'm not as good as this person and you know my life isn't their highlight reel or or blah 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 i was on instagram once and i was like looking at my page and i was like wow i, I wish i had my life i was like it looks so amazing <laughs> this guy's life looks thank you for incredible. saying incredible Right. You know, and everybody is doing that. And then we're it's natural each other yeah. right. unconsciously is like, you know, points of suffering. You know, everybody's just kind of doing that. So let's say that the, these media companies are, are leveraging that. They're also leveraging it because we get high on it. You know, so that's what I'm saying is I had a moment of like missing the thing that I was so used to that it was a part of it was like the eating of burgers and fries every single day. You know, it's like. Um, but no, what I explore in the poem is I don't want it back like that. You know, I'm I not, read I'm that not poem. looking to self-destruct in order to have that high back, but it's because I'm aware of it. Some people are not aware of that, and then they wind up self-destructing. I think that's why you see people hit these incredible highs in their lives and then just completely mess everything up. And it's because they want to go back to what's comfortable and safe. Interesting take. I'm, I'm, that's what does. I'm processing all of that. Um, kind of. I'm just thinking how that applies to Elvis. Like, you know, like, you know, am I wrong in what I said? I don't think I am, but I think that you may also be right. I think there's two rights in that. Like, so when I was talking about Elvis, was it a combination of both? Was it a combination of what I said, which is he 
got complacent and he was like, okay, well now I've got all this fame and power and money and that, which is what I wanted. So I don't need to keep working hard and keep trying to get to that next level. I don't need to worry about that. And then by doing that, it kind of brought him down and he started to slow down. And the more complacent you are, the less happy you are, as I said, is, is my opinion. I, and, but maybe sorry, it was a combination of what you said, which is like, well, I kind of missed the old me where I had like all these problems and, and, or maybe not problems is the right word, but where I, you know, I was struggling to be this and, and now here I am. And it's like, I want some of that back. That's interesting. I honestly have never thought about that side of it. It's almost like, like, I don't know Elvis' story at all. So I, I can't speak on, on, on the game. <laughs> is there a more <laughs> recent reference we can use? Yeah. I hear well, no, no, it's a, it, it, we can still use it because I think that oftentimes if people don't work out uh, their issues when they're younger, they wind up, which it's difficult to process stuff in real time. You know, you, sometimes you don't even have access or the capacity to process it. So then you just start chasing things and you start chasing things that distract you from that feeling. So in, in the analogy that you're using, maybe he got, he was distracting, he was distracting, he got all of this validation and adulation and love and, and then at a certain point, it shifted. And then all of a sudden, when that distraction wasn't there, he was left with himself. And he tried Apart to replace it with drugs and food, right? Exactly. So uh, I don't know, there's not one truth and, and everybody has a different experience, but it's fun to explore. Elvis, man. If you don't know who Elvis is, if you're one of the young ones, look him up. He's an interesting dude. I know. I'm just singing a, a recent reference today. I, did you see the Bee Gees documentary? I did not. I heard it was good, though. Still a little outdated, but a little bit more recent. Very similar story. You should watch it. I, wanna, I won't spoil it for you or anybody okay. watching, but bottom line is you. it starts with Barry Gibb. He's the last remaining BJ. Uh, uh, BG. BJ. <laughs> Freud didn't slip there. Uh, and he, you know, all of his brothers are dead. Well, there you go. I ruined the punchline, but most okay. people know that. Uh, but he's 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 gotten to this point now where he's finally starting to be happy. And the whole documentary is this journey of him from start to finish. And from an outside perspective, you look at that guy's life and you're like, dude, you you are the luckiest man alive. Like you must have been so freaking happy, like your whole life, because you had this huge. And as the documentary starts to go through and you start to see these inner squabbles with his brothers and the power and the fame getting to all of them. And then it was like a power struggle between his, his own family members causing riff where he didn't talk to one of his brothers for like 20 years. Um, be, the disco being like the enemy at one point where there was this huge thing in New York City where they burned all the disco records and Bee Gees was like the face of disco, even though they had no intention of being that. And everybody, they were yeah. like vilified. And you're just like dude this guy suffered like his whole life right like he was never he was never happy he was like literally miserable almost the entire time other than that very brief part in the beginning when they started to rise to fame and it was all puppy dogs and ice cream and it's like now he's like if only i saw then what i can see now he's like if only my perspective was different and my mindset was where it is now and it just hit me so hard. I was like, God, man, I feel for this guy. And it, I mean, it just ties into like, we look like you just said, I wish I had my life on Instagram. We look at all these other people's lives on Instagram and they look so perfect. You're like, God, why can't I be that? Why can't I have that? And that's the dangerous failure loop that we get trapped but, in. Yeah, and even those people, I was literally talking to somebody yesterday that's hugely successful um, on social media. And they were talking to me about taking social media breaks because they're comparing right. themselves to other people. Of you know, so th this is, this is not a you problem or a me problem. It's an us problem. Every single person does it, you know? Um, and maybe that's just the excuse for that dissatisfaction, you know, going back to the wheel that we were talking about again. Mm -hmm. So the question is, you know, and it sounds like you're answering that with your life. Uh, how can we not be so dissatisfied with our dissatisfaction that we take it seriously? How can we just go, yeah, let me use this to move on to the next thing that I want to create in the world and just hopefully make sure that that's something positive for me and the people around me. So to me, the answer is your mindset. 
And it's just like I was saying with Barry Gibb, where he's like, God, I wish my mindset was where I think he actually used the word perspective, but to me, perspective and mindset are the same thing. And it, and it's one of, it's the number one, it's your first core that I talk about. And it's the number one thing, in my opinion, that you've got to get going, working for instead of against you or you're effed. And what you just said, you just nailed it on the head is if you can get to a point where when you do fail, when you stumble, when you fall on your ass, when you get smacked across the face, I'm not saying jump up and down and be like, woohoo, that was awesome. How can I yeah. improve from that? Because that's not realistic. But it, it's about how quickly you can get back up and go, okay, that sucked. But I know that I have everything within me to kick ass, take names, and I am an unstoppable force on my way to my goals. This was a stumbling block, a temporary obstacle standing in my way. How can I pivot? How can I get around it? How can I learn from this to become bigger, better, faster, stronger, smarter? That's what's up. And that's what it's about. And until this type of stuff is taught in schools, right? Until, and I mean, I'll get on my soapbox about, I mean, our educational system is so broken. Just like I was yeah. saying, the work world is broken. We need a catalyst, um, you know, just like, just like what just happened with COVID. I don't know if the, especially the public educational system will change, but they don't teach this type of stuff. Emotional intelligence, how to be happy, how to get along with others. Like, and it's like, until we get our mind, how, how to have a, a, a mindset that's working for instead of against you. And until we can get to that point, and from a young age, you start developing those habits based on that type of mindset versus the opposite that most of us have. I call it a fixed victim versus a growth owner mindset. Your fixed mm -hmm. victim is, is like 90, in my opinion, 90 some percent of the population, which is like, Oh, my brain, I was born the way I was. There's not really much I can do about it. And I'm just going to have to, I'm hoping maybe I'll hit the lottery one day. I'm, I'm going to kind of do the best I can and get, you know, and they get caught in this like tunnel of like, this is what I should be doing. And life's not meant to be, I'm not that guy over there. Not, life's not meant to be this. For me, it's this versus the growth owner that goes, listen up and listen good. I got the goods. I got awesome strengths. I got weaknesses too, just like every fucking other person on this planet. It doesn't make me a bad or a, a person. It just means let's figure out how to outsource those and work around those. And let's figure out how to focus on my strengths, my passions, the things I'm really good at that light the fire in my soul. And let's set goals on those and let's go, baby. And we're not mm -hmm. going to stop until we get there. And until as a, as a society, as a world, we can flip, I call it the 95 percenters versus the five percenters. We can swap that five with ninety five percent. I feel like we're we're going to continue to struggle. Well, I, I I hope I hope it flips. <laughs> well, let's do it. let's let's do it. You and me, let's flip it. We're flipping yeah, it right now. That's I'm what I do it. for a living now. And I mean, you know, it's putting that positive energy and and helping people see for things from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. You know, forty three people at a time. You know, um, yeah, great. So. Let me let me pivot slightly. I did have a few questions. We did this was such a great conversation that we went. We've talked a lot about. Um, but speaking of victim mindset, um, you know, I heard you 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 mentioned being a victim in your youth. Uh, so, what what was that about, and how did you you know how did you change your mindset? Like we were just talking about going from that sort of fixed victim, as I call it, to you know as 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 I see you now, I see you as a growth owner. I don't know if you consider yourself one, but that's how I see you. How, how would how did that transition go down? Um, I mean, it's a long transition. It wasn't easy. You know, people think that um, you just do some good positive habits for three weeks and everything's supposed to change. I think it's important for people to understand that if you've had a record that's playing the same music for a long time, even when you turn it off, you're going to sing it in your head for quite a while. You know, and if you've been having this record for years and years and years, the song is going to be in your head for maybe half that time. So, um, look, happiness is a range. It's not a point, right? And growth is incremental and accumulative. And sometimes it's so incremental that you don't even notice it until it really does start to accumulate in a way that you go, wow, I, I can see how far I've come. So I did a lot of work on myself, man. And uh, slowly but surely, I um, changed my habits and uh, noticed other things that were holding me back. And um, I'm doing pretty good now. 
So I want to just kind of focus in on what you just said because it's everything that I'm always talking about. And so I have my own equation of life. That was the meaning of life. My equation of life is your belief system plus your repeated actions plus time equals who you will become. And that's right. to me, that's exactly what you just said. Like your belief system shifted over time. It doesn't happen overnight. It can't. It's not possible. Anybody that says they have a, the elixir of life for just nine ninety nine, click here, run right. the other fucking direction. Um, it, it's it's a small teeny, and that's what going back to James Clear Atomic Habits. That that's what that's all about. It's those small teeny actions that that end up compounding over time. And it's like, okay, you want them working for instead of against you, right? And yeah. it's figuring that out along your journey. Like, which are the ones that are hurting me, that are building the negative momentum, and which are the ones that I can use to help me get to where I want? And it sounds like, you know, just just same with me. I was suicidal in college, mm -hmm. and I was, I was your typical fixed victim. And I was sure life was out to get me, and, and there was nothing that I could do about it. And I had a serendipitous moment, just like I was saying, that spark. I was fortunate enough to hit my rock bottom and have my rock bottom bounce to where I was like, okay, this is what life's about. And I just got really into self-help and personal development and started kind of slowly. But here I am, you know, 25 years later, it, it's, and I'm still growing and it's still a journey. And, but I, I'm literally, I would have traded my brain for anything back then. I would have been like, just please, just give me somebody else's brain because I'm just suffering. And now I wouldn't trade it for the world. But it's it's the slow. It's I started changing my belief system, which then translated into my actions started changing, and then time. You gotta let time do its thing. You have to have to come. Absolutely. Right on, brother. Well, I like to end the shows. This has been awesome. Uh, I yeah, man, it's been a great conversation. Again. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like, dude, I feel like I could talk to you for hours. By the way, in where does the NQ come from? In question. So, what is your real name? Adam. Adam. Okay, Adam. Do you want me to call you in like queue? Adam in question, you know? It's like right. uh, living a, a life of, of inquiry. It's amazing. You research you. Right, it's all in queue. It's like, who's this Adam person? But I love that. And in question. Okay, thank you. Um, I've had it since I was 15 years old. You know, I'm 42 now. So it's really just a part of my life. I mean, I, I don't see it as any different from Adam or in queue or anything like that. You know, they're they're both... They're both the same person. Yep, love it. Um, I, I, I want a, I want a nickname like that. People just call me the Worm. That doesn't the doesn't worm. quite have the same ring to it. Um, okay, I'll I'll, uh, I'll marinate on that. <laughs> no, no, it's I know it's it's for reasons. It's not because I'm a worm. It's it's for other reasons, but. Uh, no, I was saying I'll marinate on your new nickname. Yeah, man, thank you, thank you. I need a cool one. It's funny. The other day, I was I was with some friends and we were playing um, this sport called paddle. They do this in the Midwest. Never heard of it in my life because I was down in Florida for a while. And it's basically outdoor like pickleball, racquetball, but they mm -hmm. do it in the middle of the winter. I mean, it was it was okay. negative fifteen degrees here a couple Jeez. weeks ago, and we were playing. Um, and I told one of my buddies, I was like, "Hey, dude." People call you cop. His last name's Cop, K O P P, and everybody calls him Cop. And I'm like, that's just. Mm -hmm. Sorry, just had a thing go off. I always wanted people to call me by my last name. I think it's just so cool. I was like, dude, just start calling. So at the beginning of the night, it was like a friend group we got together. I was like, just start calling him more and let's see if it takes off. I was like, go overboard, more, more, more. So the whole night, he's like, more, nice shot, more, more, more. And by the end of the night, didn't catch. But it ties to what we were just talking about, like habits. Like people are so. I think it's cool. I like more. Yeah, more, right? So I want to go by that. But anyways. I like more. More is cool. I'm going to call you more. Because it's actually more joy. More abundance. More connection. More, you know. Yeah. More, or more, more sadness. More <laughs> anger. More destruction. No. <laughs> It's more, whatever you want it to be. It's man. more, and it, like you were saying earlier, it's it's got it all. Every every emotion has its place, right? It's not about getting rid of sadness. It's it's managing it and figuring out what to do with it and use it. Um, so is integration. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I like to I like to end the shows with you know as you've seen I'm a big habits guy. Um, is there one habit? that you would put on a billboard that you would consider like the most important habit that you've developed that has changed your life for the better? Yeah. 
Um, I think writing is really great. I mean, look, I, I could say meditation, I could say breath work, I could say therapy, I could say working out, I could say a lot of different things. But um, the first thing that really comes to mind is writing. And um, writing has been a, an outlet for me to express and uh, empower myself throughout my life. Uh, so that's really special. And actually, for anybody who is interested, uh, we're doing a, uh, there's still time to sign up. We're doing a, uh, a workshop. I do these like workshops for companies and corporations or just publicly. I've been doing them all around the world for years. And so we're doing a writing workshop series starting this Sunday. So if you go to my Instagram in the bio, it's called The New You. And um, we'll probably have about 150 people or something like that that'll sign up. It was about 150 people last time. And um, we do three weeks. And everybody has an opportunity to uh, explore their own story through poetry, which sounds maybe intimidating if you're not a writer, but it's incredible. You don't have to be a writer. It's really just about uh, choosing something that is moving and meaningful to you and then exploring it through this art form and then sharing it and being witnessed. And I'm telling you, it's transformative for every single person who joins every single time. So uh, that's my thing is writing. And if somebody wants to come and learn, they can just go to my Instagram and sign up for the new you workshop. Nice, man. Thank you. And then your new book, Inquire Within, um, Contemplating Universal Issues of Love, Loss, Forgiveness, Transformation, and Belief. Um, Inquire Within shines a light on our lives, brings peace and inspiration in these uncertain times. Rhythmic, original, authentic, and inspiring. This is what I have written about your book. I'm going to order it. I actually, almost every single person I interview, unless I'm like, this guy's a dud or she's a dud, obviously I'm not going to call anybody out, but I, I, if, they, if I connect with them, I always want to read their books. And I'm a reader. As I said, I never stop learning, never stop growing, going back to the old meaning of life. So thank you, right. Adam, for being on. Um, I want to keep in touch with you. So I don't know if I have yeah. your email, but I want to get it. I'll DM you after. I know um, your people have hit me up, so I'm sure you have it somewhere. But definitely message me and, and uh, love to keep in contact. Yeah, with let's keep mind. connected, man. Keep doing um, what you're doing, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you, man. I still love everybody. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. That's it for today's episode of the Five Core Life Podcast with Will Moore, founder of More Momentum. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you have not already, please make sure to subscribe and follow the podcast wherever you are listening or watching this so that you get notified when new episodes air every week. And if you have not joined the Five Core Life Facebook group, I encourage you to join that and see what all of the fuss is about there's some awesome content designed to get your momentum going, including a monthly giveaway to win a complimentary coaching call with the Will Moore. The Facebook group is currently the only place to get Will's dedicated attention on your five core journey. If you're feeling stuck or just want someone to cheer you on, then that is the place you need to be. There's nothing like a community of people on the same journey to get you fired up, kicking butt, and taking names. So come join us. Get moving. Gain momentum. Join the movement. Join Emmett by going to moremomentum.com to take a free life evaluator quiz on where you currently stand in each of your five course.